Hey, am I interrupting your French Open final tournament? Well, if yes, I really apologize for that. Okay, let's make it a little more interesting. Stefano Tsitsipas versus Novak Djokovic. Whom do you bet for? Well, I won't tell you mine. Me too excited to know the results. But today's rule for the episode is to always have a beginner's mindset because you know you're never too cool for the school. So keeping the Sunday set of colloquy quite laconic, let's just finish the leftover pizza pieces. I mean to say the leftover conversation and today's topic is simply tubular secretion. Welcome all to Is Pharmacology Difficult podcast. I'm your host Dr. Radhika Vijay, MBBS MD Pharmacology and this is the audio hub to get the best simplified basic tips, strategies, methods and lots of ideas to learn better, understand better and make your concepts crystal clear. If you really find and if there's a question hovering in your minds is pharmacology difficult? Lend me your ears for a while and let in the magic of knowledge. There are two separate classes of non-specific transporters, one for organic acids and one for organic bases, and they are the OAP and the OCT. They are dynamically functioning in the proximal tubule. And yes, along with these there are P glycoprotein and MRP2 efflux transporters too. Drugs with large value of glomerular filtration rate, more than 120 ml, they are subjected to the added on tubular secretion. Free drug concentration gradually goes down as the active transport of the drug takes place across the tubules. All this process prompts the drug to dissociate more from the plasma proteins and they are piled up or they are ready for the secretion. Now, after knowing all this, what do you infer? You infer that plasma protein binding is in no way an obstacle for this particular process, the process of tubular secretion. Because just pay attention, the carrier is also a protein. If the glomerular filtration clears around 20% of drug reaching the kidney, then 80% of the drug reaches the proximal tubule and it is secreted in the tubular lumen. Now, just a reminder that tubular secretion requires energy. It's an energy dependent procedure. Let's quickly enlist the drugs specific for the two narrated carrier proteins. For the organic acid transporters, it operates for the salicylates, propyl acid, penicillin, sulfenpyrazone, nitrofurantoin, etc. While organic base transporters, they are for amyloride, thiazides, triamterene, quinine, furosemide, cimetidine, morphine, procaine, etc. Endogenous substances like choline, dopamine and histamine also find their way via these organic base transporters. Now let me tell you one surprising fact and that is that transporters they are bi-directional, they are quite non-selective and some drugs with similar physiochemical characteristics they compete with these drugs for the same transporters. Now, best example and the most classical example here is about the proben acid weak acid. Proben acid competitively inhibits the tubular secretion of penicillin, amoxicillin and increases the plasma half-life of penicillin. On the other hand, weak acidic drugs, they compete with the uric acid and their plasma concentration increases and because of this, some diseases, some pathologies like gout, it may be precipitated. Also, another notable point is about the exogenous substances. They are predominantly secreted, remember that, while endogenous substances like uric acid, they are reabsorbed. Now, there are few more drug interactions that I'm going to tell you that occur due to competition for the tubular secretion sites. First one is the aspirin. It blocks the uricosuric effect of proben acid. 
Secondly, proben acid decreases the level of nitrofurantoin in the urine. Then we have tolbutamide excretion. It is inhibited by sulfin pyrazon. Then last in my list today is cunidine. It inhibits the efflux carriers like P-glycoprotein and decreases the renal and biliary clearance of drugs like digoxin. Now another fact coming up is no drugs in true sense can block the active secretion of the basic drugs. And wherever you study such drug interactions, they really hold no importance. Another fact and last fact to add on in today's fact file is that tubular transport is quite juvenile stage during the time of birth. So drugs like aspirin, penicillin, they are very long acting in the neonates and aging also slows down the renal function and in turn it also slows down the drug clearance. Well that was all a terse narration about the tubular secretion. In no mood to interrupt the score commentary, carry on please, so will I too. For all the updates and latest episodes of my podcast, please visit www.isfarmacologydifficult.com where you can also sign up for a free monthly e-newsletter of mine. It actually contains a lot of updates about medical sciences, drug information updates and my podcast updates also. You can follow me on different social media handles like Twitter, Insta, Facebook and LinkedIn. They all are with the same name as Pharmacology Difficult. If you are listening for the first time, do subscribe and follow whatever platform you are consuming this episode. Stay tuned to read and review on iTunes Apple Podcast. Stay safe, stay happy, stay enlightened and do enjoy the French Open for the day. Have a great Sunday, have a great weekend. May your favorite player takes away the French Open. Thank you.